What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Burundi this time. Okay, now, or is it Burundi? Goddamn. <laughs> I hate it when I mispronounce things. Burundi, Burundi, I don't know. But uh, basically, there's a very dark story behind this uh, country. I'm pretty sure you all knew, know what happened in uh, Rwanda. Well, what Rwanda is... Uh, no, why is it so hard to pronounce? Rwanda. Rwanda, there we go. Um, uh, you know, the Tutsi and Hutu tribe. Yeah, a lot of messed up things went on there. It's kind of funny because, like... What what uh, divides the Tutsi and Hutu are only like uh, status. Like I believe the Tutsi are like the uh, uh, Tutsi rolls, like those very like sweet ca American candies. I think. Okay, no, that, that was just a joke. But the Tutsi are like the nobles, and the Hutu are the uh, like peasant folk. And I think that's about it. Uh, or did I get those flipped around? I don't know. But uh, anyway, yeah. That th 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 what applies to Rwanda also applies to Burundi because yeah, there's a pretty. It's pretty dark stuff that that went on there. Also, it's one of the most impoverished places in the world, so there's that as well. So anyway, let's just go ahead and get into the uh, video. I hope this is loud enough because in a lot of my in a lot of my videos, it's not loud enough, but hopefully it will be this have time. Have any of you seen the movie Hotel Rwanda? Well, oh, okay, so for like the two of you that have, I'm one of them. <laughs> the tribes, flip the script backwards. Uh -huh. and it's basically Burundi. Yeah, for those who didn't see the uh, movie, it was basically uh, sums up what happened in uh, Rwanda. Uh, the Tutsi and Hutu, it was a genocide, so kind of like, I, I forget who, who did what on who, but like 800,000 people died, and you can like see, you can like see some messed up shit, like when you search up like that, uh, some of the videos there on uh, on that whole ordeal, you can see like torsos freaking floating in like waters, going down waterfalls and everything is like, Oh, so oh, so messed up. And <laughs> thanks for the demonetization, YouTube, because you can't see anything anymore without getting demonetized. Oh my god, it's getting, getting insane, I, I swear. I'm going up track. It's time to learn geography. Let's, let's finally get into it. Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Today is our last country, beginning with the letter B. And that means let's finish this up with some style. And with style, I mean let's follow the exact same format we've been doing this whole time. Mm -hmm. Let's dissect the flag. <laughs> The map is divided into four parts. By I don't know. White I didn't have any other the idea upper and to lower post. Parts are red in color, while the left and right ones are unique green. flag. The white though. color of the cross represents peace. The green represents the nation's hope and endeavors for future development, and the red symbolizes the suffering of the nation during the freedom struggle. The three stars kind in the triangular the configuration stand for the three major ethnic groups of Burundi, the Hutu, the Tutsi, and the Twa. I don't the know about the Twa. Twa. Only make about one percent of the population, but we'll talk about that later. The three stars also stand for the three parts of the national motto: Ubumwe, Ipikorwa and Iterambere, which in the Kirundi language means unity, work, and progress. Despite the fact that unity has kind of been a hot button issue <laughs> in this country for a while, we'll talk about that later, but first... Okay, so Burundi is kind of small, yet compact, yet widespread. Let's expound on that. First of all, if Lake Victoria mm -hmm. was the eye of Africa, Burundi would be like the teardrop of Africa. Shaped like an arrow uh, pointing down, it. Burundi is one of the smallest African countries, landlocked, located in East Central Africa, bordered by Tanzania to the east and south, Rwanda to the north, and a comfortably narrow slot with the Democratic Republic of Congo to the north and west. The remainder of the western part of the country is surrounded by Lake Tanganyika, which, by the way, used to be the former name of Tanzania. The country is divided into 18 Makes provinces, sense. each one named after the capital that resides in it, except for Bujumbura rural, whose capital is Isale. Each province is also populated with a near proportionate ratio of residents, each one with about half a million residents. Yeah, Burundi did a real good job at spreading out. That's pretty cool, Bujumbura, what they did with the, uh, with the uh, provinces. Tanganyika, and a stone throw away from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's kind of funny, though, because a lot mm -hmm. of Burundi's borders, especially with Tanzania, are kind of like partial river borders, in which they touch a river, but then Burundi is like, eh, I think I'll claim this nearby <laughs> creek instead and then connect right back to the river again. This is known as like uh, a horseshoe lake. Because basically, if you guys didn't know, I'm pretty sure some of you did know, when a river uh, flows, it starts to curve more and more. So, uh, you know, and these two parts like get closer and closer together. It's a long story of how that happens. Basically, just, just go with the flow. Ah, see what I did there? And eventually, uh, these two sides will touch and the the river will start flowing this way instead of you know the way it went before you started meandering and that meandering part ends up as a lake it's known as a horseshoe lake what's really cool is you can actually find these on mars that's how we know that rivers actually flowed on mars once from these uh uh horseshoe lakes or like dead arms i believe it's all, they're also called like that so yeah pretty cool or maybe tanzania is just kind of grabby it's my river 
Otherwise, Burundi's learn or learn about rivers with a generic wolf. Oftentimes <laughs> unmarked and virtually invisible as it straddles farm fields and unified uh -huh. towns and communities that really don't care about distinguishing their nationalistic separations. Now, because eh, Burundi's so small and compact, they have a wide web of road networks nice road, that surge though. throughout every corner of the country. Many of which Google Maps road. does a horrible job at tracing and documenting. This makes them <laughs> Typical. unique in that in Burundi, pretty much all of the country is accessible and navigable by road. Burundi is pretty straightforward in its domain, small and compact. I mean, there are roughly five times more people in Burundi than Botswana, and yet the country is 23 times smaller. It's a lot greener. Wise. After Rwanda, Burundi is the second most densely packed land country in Africa. This means Burundi actually has a lot more potential for dispersed cultivation. And let's talk about that in... What is this, agriculture now? It's still well, giving me the finger, Burundi, you kind of the have cactus. To picture something like a factory. Every area is used for something, and the entire thing is moving all at once. First of all, the country lies on the East African Rift, which includes the Kagera River, the most remote headstream and speculated source of the Nile River. Yep, it all starts here. The land mostly in the west and north is hilly and mountainous, and as you go to the east, the area kind of drops into a plateau. The majority of the land is used for pasture and agricultural production. This is where Wakanda is hidden. Density, and yet the widespread I can't remember, like, uh, fictionally, Wakanda, well, g the geography of Wakanda. Wakanda is like situated in Burundi or like Rwanda is like close to there. Uh, so who knows? Maybe the Black Panther is hiding somewhere in the jungles of Burundi. Dispersion of the people. But this cloaking has device. actually been a major issue as only about 600 square kilometers of natural untouched forest remains in the country. All right, here's the thing. You know how in high school you had to learn the periodic table? Well, uh. somewhere between the alkalis and the halogens, you came across that horrible mess of unrecalled metals consigned to oblivion. Well, Burundi has those elements. The country has quite a few known deposits of elements like vanadium, niobium, Here comes tantalum, and yes, even tantalum? a little bit of molybdenum. Denim. Molybdenum. Look, I try my best to pronounce location names, but when it comes to chemistry, I have no standards, people. Okay, we don't have time any to vibranium. The covalent bond See? electron sequences. Okay, that is not my job. Look, I could go chemistry on now. Geography, but let's be honest, <laughs> you pretty much know what I'm gonna say. Cash crops like coffee and tea are grown. Sixty percent agriculture, GDP, ninety percent subsistence farming dependent. Yada yada yada. Let's just cut to the chase. The people of this country are really what define it, and let's talk about that. Hey, better roads than in Bosnia. <laughs> At least. Okay, so here's where things are gonna get a little crazy because Burundi has kind of been in a little bit of a pickle for a while now. The country has a little over 10 million people, making Burundi one of the most densely populated countries in Africa. The majority mm -hmm. of the population, about 83%, are from the Hutu tribe, and about 16% are from the Tutsi tribe. Pay attention because soon we're gonna explain how these two people groups, the Hutus and Tutsis, have greatly shaped and molded the total social know. structure of this entire country, and not only that, but also areas around the region. Finally, you have a really small minority of people from the Twa tribe, whom are kind of regarded as the bush people and a couple thousand whites and Asians living in the country to round things up. Okay, so in order to understand how Burundi functions, you kind of have to know two things. One, who exactly are the Hutus and Tutsis? And two, you have to know a little bit of history. I'll try to break it down in the fastest way I can because if you're like me, you just want to get to the point. Hutus and Tutsis are basically indistinguishable from each other and came from the same people group. Many Burundians and Rwandans will tell you that the perpetuated stereotype is that Hutus are a little bit shorter and stockier with wider built bodies used for manual labor, while Tutsis are taller and leaner with felt physiques used for adorning themselves with beautiful garbs of the high class. I don't want to yeah. say in the most extreme sense, think of Lord of the Rings, elves, and dwarves, but eh, yeah. The thing is, it all... The reason the Tutsus are... Here, here's some more biology with uh, generic wolf, but uh, the reason that Tutsus... Tutsus? Tutsus. I just already forgot the name. <laughs> Goddamn, I'm, I'm a little tired. I, you know, just came home from work in the gym, so... Uh, yeah, basically they're taller because they had they're wealthier and they had you know better food and those who have like better nutrition usually end up a bit taller. Well, apparently I didn't have too much uh, nutrition. Instead, I got a a attrition and became a lot shorter <laughs> instead. So yeah, basically they had better food, more high quality food, large taller people. Simple. Pretty much started with class and not ethnicity. Hundreds mm -hmm. of years ago, I anybody this who already? built up wealth and status pretty much just automatically became a Tutsi, even if they affiliated with the Hutu tribe prior. It was pretty much just a social structure. Both Hutus and Tutsis speak relatively the same language. The only difference is that Rwandan Hutus and Tutsis may have a slightly different dialect, but it's totally mutually understandable. Essentially, after a short 20 year unsuccessful stint by the Germans, Burundi was under Belgian colonization, kind of. It was more like a king's land rather than a colony, until independence in 1962. Historically, the Hutus always had larger numbers and populace in Burundi. However, Tutsis retained most of the political dominance in the area. And it all had to do with the fact that the Tutsis had a kingdom. And when you have a kingdom, that means you have power! 
<laughs> Belgians kind of cater to the local social structures okay, and Paul. enable the Tutsis <laughs> to maintain their ruling influence. And you can probably guess what happens next in this scenario. Yeah, when colonizers leave their colonies, things get pretty crazy pretty fast. Essentially, this led to the Burundian genocide. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but essentially the quickest way I can put this, for 20 years it was the Tutsis pushing down the Hutus, then for about 10 years it was the Hutus pushing down the Tutsis, and then finally in 2005 it subsided kind of but then recently eh, yeah okay let's move on french and kirundi are the official languages however english and swahili are widely taught most citizens are polyglots with trilingual or quadrilingual capabilities learning all four languages in elementary Impressive. and middle schools <laughs> yeah in africa you gotta get them while they're young here's the thing for the longest time burundi used to have a monarchy and today still kind of does even though most of the royal house is in exile i mean princess esther kamatari ran for president in 2005 but it didn't quite fall through. And then you have that is a cool hairstyle. What did I tell you? <sighs> okay, Wakanda so look, guys, forever. You kind of start seeing a pattern going on in Africa, and it kind of goes like this: Term one, having fun. Term two, watching you. Term three, felony. Term four, oh, you gonna get assassinated. Essentially, Nkurunziza just broke the constitution and went for a third term, causing an uproar for both Hutus and Tutsis. This resulted in the exodus of over 100,000 Burundians, one of which helped me with this video. Thanks, Renovat. Speaking of helping people, that's a cool name Renovat. Is he from Wakanda? It sounds like a name from Wakanda. <laughs> who was so dramatic about their ex that they just broke up with that they kept using you as a crutch for consolation and for a while you tried to console them for as much as you could but then you kind of got a little tired of all their calls at 2 45 a.m and then you put an embargo on them. Yeah that's kind <laughs> of like Burundi. Burundi is dramatic. Since independence from Belgium, the country has pretty much either been in a constant state of internal conflict or straight up civil war. Although some years were a little bit more calm and peaceful in comparison to others, overall there's this perpetual looming ambiance of tension that covers the entire area to this day. This is partially the reason why Burundi doesn't really have a wide tourism sector. It's kind of like being invited to dinner at your Italian cousin Vito's house on poker night. You know somebody's leaving. With guns. <laughs> hey, I can say that because I'm part Italian, okay? And I'm pretty sure somewhere I have a cousin Vito. Burundi used to have pretty good relations with all of their neighbors, but after the whole civil war thing, hundreds of thousands of Burundians have fled the country all over the world, but most heavily in their immediate neighbors, and the most, over 300,000, in Tanzania. Now, if you don't know anything about Tanzania, Tanzania is kind of like the big, chill, happy-go-lucky uncle of Africa. They have over 120 tribes that they have more or less kind of successfully coalesced into a unified nation. Because That's of language. So when Burundians came over, Tanzania Swahili. initially was like, yeah, no worries, we'll help, but then things got really- Swahili is actually Arabic uh, in origin, the name Swahili, and it means language of the coast. So basically when Arabs came to the, uh, yeah, Arabs did, uh, you know, actually like at one point uh, take over like Eastern Africa, it was the Omani uh, Caliphate or Emirate. I forget which one. No, no, it was not the Caliphate, Emirate. Uh, basically empire and they uh, saw that uh, the people there were speaking a similar language and they just called it the language of the coast basically is how it goes the messy Burundian rebels used Tanzania and other states as basis for insurgent activities accusations were made and finally Tanzania along with other countries were like look Burundi you got to get some stuff sorted out until then we're putting an embargo on you Burundi was like okay fine I will Jeez. And in 1999, the embargo was lifted and relations have gotten better, kind of. I don't know, well, whatever. Belgium, of course, has relatively good relations with Burundi, despite some unfavorable historical incidences that leave a sour taste in their mouths, but eh, they've moved on. Embassies exist in both nations, numerous- This is a different shade of green than this one, which is what I noticed. Like, all these African states have their own shade of- Well, it's probably down to the soil structure and the type of plants that grow there, but still. This has like a more mollusol structure. This, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to get into agriculture. Burundians live abroad and are born in Belgium. Surprisingly, South Korea is a good friend. After the genocide ended in 1993, Korea stepped in and was like, hey, we get the whole nationalistic division thing. You want to hang out? And since then, they developed good ties and relations. In terms of their best friend, however, most Rwanda? Burundians would probably say Rwanda. Rwanda is pretty much like the conjoined twin of Burundi. They share so much culturally, linguistically, and diplomatically that it's often hard to tell the two apart. The only difference is that Rwanda is currently led under a predominant Tutsi government and Burundi under Hutu. But even then, it's basically just like you're going to your brother's house. After centuries of kingdoms, empires, wars, colonies, and drama, these two countries have always been with each other and more or less love each other. In conclusion, yes, Burundi does have some stuff they gotta sort out. However, it's not completely unredeemable, and hopefully they get back on track because that lakeshore <laughs> looks like a pretty cool getaway. Finally! We're done with the bees! That took like a year! Cambodia is coming up next. Okay, going to Southeast Asia next time. So yeah, Burundi, that was an, surprisingly a very interesting one because uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to blabber on too much, but I'm just going to mention that Rwanda is doing pretty well for itself. Uh, the brother country of Burundi. Burundi, unfortunately, is like one of the most impoverished states in the world currently. But R Rwanda recently is actually doing pretty good. So, uh, which uh, is indicative of Burundi being pretty good as well. So, yeah. Anything else do I need to say to blabber on? I don't know. I guess that's going to be it. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, Wakanda forever.